Hello, and welcome to another Planet Destiny exotic weapon review. Today, we will be reviewing Dragon's Breath. Dragon's Breath is an exotic rocket launcher that came with the Dark Below DLC. It is awarded randomly in PvE or PvP, achieved with some luck from the Cryptarch, or sold by Xur. Its signature ability leaves a giant fireball on the ground similar to Warlock's solar grenades. Before we really get into the good-bad section of the review, though, there is one thing that I need to discuss about Dragon's Breath. This rocket launcher lacks the tracking ability of other exotic rocket launchers, so let's take a moment and discuss the pros and cons of those two rocket launcher types. Truth and Galahorn both have their forms of tracking. More times than not, you can fire a rocket at a target that's far away or moving and have a hit. Dragon's Breath, on the other hand, lacks that ability to track targets in favor of being able to select exactly where you want this rocket to land and use the Pyromancer perk. The pros of a dumb fire rocket are that you can really just pick the exact place that you want that rocket to land. Unfortunately, the cons means that you just can't reliably hit a moving or far away target. You end up losing out on some damage due to either missing the shot entirely or it just doesn't land directly center, ensuring maximum damage. The pros for tracking are that you can just kind of fire at a target that's really far away or really mobile, and it'll pretty much hit them. Also, you're just able to dump fire the rocket if you can't get a lock on. The only real con to a tracking rocket is that it can sometimes cause missiles to hit surrounding objects instead of their intended target. I feel they made this rocket with dump fire really only due to the Pyromancer perk, since it allows you to just pick a choke point or other area and lock that down with a solar grenade effect. The good. The blast radius on Dragon's Breath is huge. It's tied with Truth with the highest blast radius among exotic rocket launchers at 96. It also shares the ability to have three rockets in the tube with Truth, although Dragon Breath requires a tier 1 perk to get this. It also has the highest rate of fire among exotic rocket launchers, although that really isn't saying much since it has a fire rate of 18 versus the other launchers that only have 11. The Pyromancer perk is its signature ability that will leave a solar grenade effect in its wake for about 5 seconds. As I stated before, this allows you to have some nice area of effect denial and control matches, and can keep mobs from spawning out of rooms in certain areas. Landing it on a stationary target can yield some pretty impressive numbers, especially if you get to get multiple rockets off. Now let's get into some of the bad things. The low velocity is the most standout thing on this weapon. This is made even more apparent by the lack of tracking, but more on that in a minute. The low velocity effectively forces you to try and up that stat and ignore some of the other customization perks. I'd really like to have the quick draw on this weapon so I can immediately bring it up and lay down a solar grenade effect somewhere, but I'm just forced to spec for a slightly faster missile speed. Dump fire can be a good and a bad thing. More times than not though, you want tracking on a rocket launcher. While the Pyromancer perk plus the lack of tracking allows you to pick where you want the solar grenade effect, you lose the benefit of guaranteeing the blast will actually hit the target. Dragon's Breath also has the slowest reload speed of the exotic rocket launchers at 52, compared to Galahorn 69 and Truth's 79. Alright, let's take a look at some of the perks that Dragon's Breath has. Starting out, you're going to have Smart Drift Control, Predictable and Controllable Recoil, Penalty to Velocity. If you look at the Velocity stat, it's actually incredibly low, but the Blast Radius is really high. So the first thing that you're really going to want to do is try to maximize the Velocity. Out of the next ones, Linear Compensator, More Predictable Recoil, slight boost to velocity and blast radius, but more recoil. I went ahead and went with that because this will upgrade your velocity a little bit more, upgrade your blast radius a little bit more, and it's a rocket launcher. You don't need stability. I have never found a situation where I needed stability on a rocket launcher. Confined launch, greatly reduced recoil, significant penalty to velocity. Hurting the velocity at all, and not something I'm interested in doing, especially for just more stability. It's it's a rocket launcher. You point it, it'll go there, and you have plenty of time just due to the fire rate to correct for the recoil. Next upgrade is Tripod. This launcher's tube can hold three shells. It only shows two here, but it does indeed hold three. I actually really like this, you know, being able to fire off three rockets and lay down that solar AoE is just really, really nice. Now this tree here is pretty much, you're only gonna get one perk in it. You start out with Quick Draw. This weapon can be drawn unbelievably fast. While that's nice on a heavy weapon, um, the other perks in the tree just completely outweigh this in my opinion. Javelin increases warhead velocity. As you can see, it gets it up there pretty high, about 75% of the way through, and this is just really nice to have since it upgrades the velocity so much. It makes the missiles go there just a little bit quicker, and you're going to have a much easier time predicting where to fire the rocket on moving targets since this doesn't have tracking. 
Heavy payload increases the warhead blast radius. I personally find this one just pointless, really, because the blast radius is already completely maxed out for the most part. So just going a javelin is the only real clear choice in this tree. Then we have Pyromancer. Rounds fired from this weapon leave a solar flare upon detonation. I am a huge fan of this. This is really, really fun to use. While in PvP, it doesn't really seem to be that useful. People tend to just not go into it. It doesn't last a whole long time either. People won't really go into it. Um, it might catch one or two unsuspecting people if for some reason the blast radius didn't kill them. It's really nice though for like locking down tight corridor areas. That's the only time we're really gonna use it in PvP. In PvE, however, this will lock down multiple areas Mobs generally don't really move out of it quick enough, so usually this will finish them off as well. Really like this. I can't wait to get this weapon for myself just so I can play around with this a little bit more. Then we have our four damage upgrades. Cosmetic wise, the cosmetics of Dragon's Breath are just completely on point. While holding the rocket launcher, it has steam coming out of the front as if the rocket's just steaming, ready to unleash hellfire. When you fire a rocket, the tubes on the side will glow red with heat and let off some more smoke. They really went all out on making the user think this weapon was built to just burn the world to ash and cinder. The sights are very simplistic, but fit the overall theme of the World War II kind of shark teeth on the side of the weapon. It feels like the sights were just ripped off a B2 bomber, similar to those on the PlayStation exclusive weapon, the 4th Horseman. The sound is surprisingly subtle on this weapon. You would expect it to like roar with thunderous fury every time you let a rocket fly, but it actually just has a very low growl underneath the normal rocket sound. In conclusion, Dragon's Breath really just feels like a middle ground between Truth and Galahorn. It takes some things from the other launchers, like Three in the Tube from Truth, and an effect after the initial explosion, like Galahorn. However, it lacks tracking, which honestly is just needed if you want to use this reliably on anything other than trash mobs. It can find a home in PvE, but it's still subpar to Galahorn, and it might be okay to use in PvP, but really I'd still prefer Truth if I'm running a heavy weapon exotic in the Crucible. Having a 3 round magazine size standard and replacing the first perk with proximity detonation might be something Bungie should test, as it would make the weapon a little bit more versatile while bringing it up to the same level as the other rocket launchers. If you happen to get this, I'd say it's definitely worth leveling up. It's really fun to use and just oozes with fun cosmetic things. But when it comes down to do actual work, bring out Galahorn or Truth if you happen to have those. I hope you enjoyed this review. This has been Patrick Casey with Planet Destiny, your guide to the Destiny universe.